till about Janet's defense, a hairstylist turned hairstyle archaeologist. She visited a museum in 2001 and realized historians were wrong about hairstyles on Greek and Roman statues being wigs. She recreated the styles and published her findings in the Journal of Roman Archaeology. This makes a lot of sense that thread and needle were used to hold hair up. I always wondered how long. Haired people of the past existed without elastic hair tees. Any fiber works, but in our pinch, even another stand is hair can hold a braid. I always wondered how long. Haired people of the past existed without elastic hair tees. As a modern human, I tear with a crude leather rafts. Or, or I, Imger, come, or mitrums for. Just a simple single loop, and friction keeps it tight. I made it in a few minutes with a bit of scrap I had. But given time and tools, I could add some hollow rivets and a few extra holes to lace it intricately. Make it as long as I wanted. Adorn it with decoration. With a dewy dewy adorn with sh 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 deck or co 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 How about that for a conversation opener you know? They didn't wear wigs on ancient Greece and Rome. Ma'am, for the second time, this is a Wendy's. If you don't have an order, I'm going to ask you to exit the drive. Though, Romans definitely wore wigs. Hats. Or, or Imperium Romanum. Plor in or curiosities or Romans. War. Wigs or wigs were worn in ancient Rome. Julius Caesar reportedly wore a wig and a laurel wreath to hide his progressive baldness. The emperor's wife herself, Marcus Aurelius Faustina the Elder, C. 100. 141, C. had an impressive collection of at least 300 wigs. Do you wear wigs? Have you worn wigs? Will you wear wigs? When will you wear wigs? They did have flat tops in ancient Rome. She is incredibly cool and did primary source research to defend her hypothesis. What I found fascinating about her story is how she decided to delve into the academic papers and caught a mistranslation off a Latin word, even though she had no training in that area. She managed to figure out that a Latin word they were translating as hairpin was being mistranslated. And that's how she figured out they were using needles to make the hairstyles. She interviewed ancient Romans. I've seen all her videos. One day I am going to get some natural yarn and sew my hair into one of those styles. I have a friend who did it for her wedding hair and it was amazing. Today I learned something genuinely unusual. Well done, Reddit. You've redeemed yourself for today. Hey now, let's not get ahead of ourselves. It's still early. That is what attracted me to Reddit originally. Eric, there used to be stuff like this daily in or war all, but nowadays it's mostly memes and other crap. This is the kind of content I'm here for. Haha. <laughs> Me too. I met her at an archaeology conference once. She's so cool. I almost got to be her model, but my hair was just a little too short. I've been following her work for some time and think what she does is brilliant. Glad to see other people appreciating it as well. It'd actually be fascinated to see a film employ her for historical hair design. Hair is often one of the things historical films have a hard time grappling with, even ones with otherwise good details. Yo mamma so old she needs a hairstyle archaeologist. I'll be damned. She used to do my hair. About 15 years ago, she asked me to model a look for her, but I never go round to it. Glad to see she is doing well, though. I am not even remotely interested in this matter, yet I appreciate her effort and find it truly impressive this woman could basically change history books like that. that she still works as a hairstylist in Baltimore. The curator of Renaissance and Baroque art at the Walters Art Museum is a friend or neighbor of hers and often trees to get her colleagues 
to grow their hair out for Janet to play with. Walks into museum disproves historians no further explanation. I had thought that ethno. Astronomy and archaeostronomy were the most niche archaeology, but aguous this makes sense. I wonder how granular it will be for the current age. Like an archaeologist that specializes in form furries, their peers studying mainstream tumber furries and both beneath the rock star to community server furries. I recently fell down the rabbit hole of historical textile making from weft to final garments. And there is so much to learn and know, and it's all so different depending on time and region. Thank you. This was wonderful. I'm a really big fan of non. Standard archaeology like this. There's a part of me that wants to someday research ancient cooking sports and games, but I've never really been sure where to start, outside of my own amateur research. This is the meaning of science is for all. Finally, something of value on Reddit's front page. Double degree on hairdressing and Roman history. She can be completely unemployable or be one of the most demanded scholar ever. Can't wait for the next Dan Brown book. How can a hairdresser be unemployable? I'm genuinely quite inspired learning this. Ye yeah, like this lady should have been in the news more often. I can't remember the exact details, but something very similar happened with chefs critiquing the conclusion of archaeologists about the meals of people in the Bronze Age. Something about their diet being super bland, but the chef was able to show, but that a lot of the meals weren't bad at all. Wish I could find the article but basically cooking was really the scientists' area of expertise, and could only say what they ate in its purest form while a chef could look at what they had to work with and figure out what their meals more likely tested like. While I don't doubt what you are saying because you, you will make what you have the best it can be, how influential the spice trade or sugar was makes me think that foods really were bland. We're spoiled with all these flavors these days. Fish, for example, a staple for many cultures, tastes completely different with just a pinch of something something. Seasoning rainbow trout with nothing but the stuff you can find in the nearby forest is real bland, and gets real old real fast. I mean the spice trade was really prolific, and all that they did was make food taste better. So a figure it must have made it a lot better. I am confused why they thought it was wigs in the first place. Were wigs common back then? What would have been the material used? Would have been the 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 Apparently the hair of blonde Germanic girls was very popular back then. They did make wigs out of it. Wigs were common among wealthy Romans, and they used human hair. For more elaborate hairstyles, like that worn by this mother goddess on display at the Corinium Museum, Roman women commonly wore wigs made out of human hair. Black hair from India, 
and blonde hair from Germany were particularly popular. While the Indian hair was probably traded, the blonde German hair was taken as a spoil of war, at least in the early imperial period. These wigs could be sewn into a woman's real hair, helping to create more volume and height for dramatic hairstyles. Alternatively, hair could be supported and structured with shaped hair pieces, sometimes made out of fabric which had been stiffened in a curve with beeswax or resin. Hats. Or, or Corinna Museum. Or Gore 2016 or 7 or Roman. Hair care or. Different hair texture that archaeologists errant used to different water textures that archaeologists don't live with, create different hairdos from what they could think of. Imagine a very straight-haired, soft water people stumbling upon an ancient culture of hard water curly-haired people. Must be wigs, since nobody's hair that they know does that in real life. The vestal hairstyle requires about waist. Length hair to pull off, Stefan said. Other ancient styles recreated by Stephens are friendlier for short hair. However, Vestals were chosen for the priesthood between the ages of six and ten, before their full adult hair lengths would be known. I'm sure they had to make some workarounds occasionally for a Vestal who had less than adequate hair, she said. Alk rude. This happens a lot of the time and Spanish civil engineer explained how the latent text interpretation was extremely wrong when designing the tools used for city planing. Apparently the designs were good and comparable to today's tools. They used water and said something like we noticed how the surface of water is completely flat. It's a curve with its center in the same point as the center of the earth. The article is a let down. No examples shown. Check out her YouTube channel to be shoots or or YouTube. Come or user or gist. Tons of examples of Roman, medieval, and French aristocracy hairstyles. I was in college when this happened and it was amazing. My professors were so angry. I was getting a double major and one was history, as me back a plan for obscure job was teaching. There were professorial tantrums. Glorious and wonderful. Also a lesson to consult people outside the sphere of history because some jobs air ancient and this skills air informed by the past. Glass blowing is an example of this. My professors were so angry. Pulls elaborate. Sure. Consulting a modern stonemason on their thoughts regarding ancient masonry methods. Consulting a civil engineer regarding ancient bridge construction. Seems like common sense. Edit. For some reason, some people think him being sarcastic. I'm not. I bet the old dudes who spent their whole careers studying this stuff were thrilled that a random lady who had never studied archaeology in her life proved them completely wrong. It's amazing to see her work with those women's hair. I never knew they had to actually sew the hair in place. This is so cool. Hairstyle archaeologist, that's a cool profession. Love her. Ancient adornment is me weird niche area of interest, so she's basically my hero. Also, this post being so popular is pretty exciting to me. Would be nice if the article provided screenshots of Stefan's work. Jane, it does me wife's hair. She works at Studio 921 in Baltimore. Cool. To me, this is yet another example of unconscious BS leading to incorrect conclusions in anthropology. The history of the field is rife with them. I could tell even from the first version that it was a very serious piece of experimental archaeology which no scholar who was not a hairdresser, in other words, no scholar would have been able to write. This is the power of diversity, true diversity. I just read a thread last night talking about how archaeologists get confused by relics that any mom immediately sees as a baby bottle or a doll, all the while archaeologists assume it must be for religion. M. So my use of glue is not traditional, not Greek or Roman, 
but hard pomade was basically used as hair glue for historical hairstyles. So not historical materials, but still a historical practice. Actually very interesting, but the article you posted did to this Lady Justice Lol. This proves why diversity is needed in academia. The old archaeology boys club of the early 20th century had no idea on women in the ancient world. Or women in the early 20th century for that matter. Or women in general, I suppose. I sure do love the complete lack of pictures of any replicated hairstyle. This is why sexism is so weird. Clothes and hairstyles air such an under. Examined part of history despite the being so important. Dressed. The history of fashion. Super informative and well done podcast and website, which directly addresses this very topic covering how fashion advanced culture and influenced politics and society. I do historical costuming as a hobby. The lack of scholarly study is frankly shocking. Major resource text from the 1920s are still in use. Study has been increasing though as women enter the field and gain enough power to fund research. You guys should see her YouTube channel if the link off the top of my head just now. I got you. Janet Stephens YouTube apps. Or, or YouTube. Come or user or juiced. Archaeology really benefits from experts of a lot of different subjects. I remember reading that archaeologists found an ancient tool and could figure out what it was used for four ages until a leather worker took a look. Turns out it was almost identical to a tool we still use today. This kind of archaeology and ancient technology research is far more interesting than dates me teachers rammed into my head. Awesome channel. Too bad she does do men's hairstyles. Maybe someday. Does anyone know? Does the Journal of Roman Archaeology still publish their annual swimsuit issue? Archaeologists are wrong about most things. They are right up there with nutritionists in terms of bad science and refusal to change in light of new information. Oh, this thing is now proven to be 4,000 years older than we thought, which disproves our entire theory of the civilization. Me? Let's pretend it didn't happen and move on.